tell me about your program. Uh, what is it called? Our program is called the Onion Lake Free Immersion School, and it was founded in 2005 by uh, a Korean linguist, I guess you would call Brian McDonald. Him and uh, leadership at that time made a strategic plan mm -hmm. to build a Korean immersion school. So the local government at that time provided the, the, the building for the community so we can have our own Korean immersion school. What are the age groups or the target audience? Our age groups start from age 3 to age 10, from uh, early childhood to grade 4. Just, just a grade 4? Yes, okay. and then um, once we have the grade 5 curriculum completed, and then we'll continue, and hopefully within the next couple of years, we add on a grade, depending on the uh, curricular developers when they complete the curriculum, or as they complete the curriculum. And uh, what is the aim of the program? The aim of the program primarily is to language retention, to teach our children how to retain their Cree language, the spoken language. Mm -hmm. As of now, the way we see it, the Niheo language, Niheo language is seen as a second language. Like the first language spoken at home is English. <laughs> so our aim is to have the students speak the Cree language and also keep their identity, who they are, and be able to identify themselves as Nihiwa First Nations people. So they'll be the next generation of the language and cultural keepers, I guess. How do you measure the success of your program? We use uh, the language-based outcomes, like from the curriculum, but then we modify it. Mm -hmm. So we still use the, the listening, the speaking, the reading, and the writing outcomes. However, we do it in our language. So we use the standard Roman orthography, reading and writing. Yeah. We had switch. We, when I started here, it was uh, syllabics. But then the community decided, well, we can't read syllabics, so... Mm -hmm. So we had to switch to SRO to accommodate the parents so they'll be able to read notes and things like that. So that's one way of measuring the student's progress is through reading, writing. And uh, also uh, there's another a progression sheet that's called where our uh, gift of language and our Cree language catalyst they developed an assessment tool where we tested students twice a year if how how much they speak orally and how much they they read and how much they listen so we based a success on that uh, is the demand for the program high for the years I've been here it hasn't risen completely like high and it hasn't gone down so it's maintained at the same level. I'm predicting like in within the next 10 years it will be. Um, I'm thinking the community will will want their children to learn and for our uh, Indian Act here at the local government I think one of the requir requirements now is if they want to be in government they're going to have to be able to speak and understand our language. So I can see it going in that direction, so there'll be more pre-languages requested like for, for the community after school evenings and stuff like that. To you, what is Indigenous education? Indigenous, this is where I, when I hear um, Aboriginal, Indigenous, First Nations, Cree Nation, mm -hmm. <laughs> At a band meeting we had, it was discussed like, what are we going to call Onion Lake? So at the, I think the community decided, to, okay, we're going to be the Onion Lake Cree Nation. So that is how we're known as the Onion Lake Cree Nation. Mm -hmm. So indigenous, I guess, means you're, you're indigenous to the whatever country you're 
you were born in. But Aboriginal, I never did agree with that term. So I'm very comfortable using Indigenous or Cree Nation or First Nation. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But all in all, in my language, in my own identity, I'm a Nihio, Nihio school. How would you define education? Education for me is being able to attend an educational institution, whether it's English or Cree, to extend your knowledge in the everyday world mm -hmm. and being able to fit in this ever-growing society. And for the Cree immersion, it's being able to, to bring out the identity of a child, the soul of that child, to be able to get them to understand who they are, where they came from. Because a lot of our Native children don't know who they are. If you go to the other school and ask them, what are you? Are you Nihio? They'll say no. Because they were never taught who they are. They probably assume they're non-First Nations because they can't speak the language. For me, I think the most important thing for a child is to know who they are, where they came from. And keeping in mind that they have to know the four foundational objectives in the school are Nehiwewun, that's the language that we speak. Kiskemsuin is kinship, who they um, identity, who they are. Kiskanasukemun is uh, another foundational objective, is reminding them who they are. So those four are very important for them to know. Mm -hmm. And so based on those four foundational objectives, our curriculum that the gift of language is another department that write our curriculum. So based on those four, that's how they develop their curriculum and that's what the teachers follow. So what is your vision for the future of Indigenous education in your community and oh, in, in, the community and in, in Canada? Your, oh, yeah. Okay. My vision for my community is I'm hoping that expands mm -hmm. I'm hoping that we get more students every year, mm -hmm. that we add a grade level each year. And the way we do that is we have uh, program reviews every year where, where uh, the leadership and the Board of Education, they get to hear from all four schools in, within our community. And mm -hmm. then based on those, like, this is my report right here. Yeah. So based on those reports, they're able to make decisions on what we need and how are we going to get there. So I'm hoping that it grows. I'm hoping we have more interest from the parents so they can send their students here. A lot of them believe that their kids need English as well to be able to assimilate into society so mm -hmm. they'll be able to speak and read the English. However, we do provide that here in grade four, like half time the teacher teaches English mm -hmm. and the other half the Cree language, um, only because they'll have that easy transition when they go to the elementary school, mm -hmm. so they'll be able to read and write the English language as well. So we have that prepared for them here. And uh, what about in Canada? In Canada, I'm hoping to see more Indigenous First Nations language schools. Mm -hmm. Like in our surrounding community, I think the closest one would be in BC. I remember I, uh, a couple of uh, teachers and I and the previous principal, we uh, went to a immersion school in BC, and I really liked their program. That's the only closest one that I know of, and the one Manitoba is trying to start, mm -hmm. but with just one grade, which is good, oh, so yeah. that's how you start. And finally, um, can you think of any types of information that, if you had now, it would help to achieve your vision for the school? <laughs> the type of information that I have would be what I base my um, 
program review presentation. My report also constantly looking for professional development from other communities that they can come and share with the staff. We have a lot of our own local local uh, resource people that we utilize, mm -hmm. a lot of elders and local schools that'll come and do presentations on different types of uh, professional development. Yeah. And then we have our local uh, yearly our, um, camps. We have um, the fall camp, and then we have a winter camp, and then we have a spring and summer camp coming up in May. And then uh, we bring in other resources, different kind of resources to come and teach our children, our students, and the staff. So a lot of that, those kind of resources, if we keep utilizing them, or if there's different pedagogies out there that I can bring in, to the school and present to uh, the administration or the Board of Education. So, but it's right now it's pretty hard to do, but I'm all, always looking for, for resources. And um, aside from the programs in which you are personally involved, what information do you have on other Indigenous education programs in Canada? Oh. The you, one I just talked about. Yeah, you kind of mentioned it before. Yes, yeah. that's the only one that I know of in the one Winnipeg uh, Resources, I think it's called. We've been phoning each other, and then I believe they have contacted our gift of language because they have a template mm -hmm. on our career immersion school, and um, I don't know where it's at right now. So that's the only other school that I know that are trying to start a career immersion school and then um, those are the only ones that I'm aware of mm -hmm. but we do have a lot of communities a lot of uh, different schools that come and visit our school all the time yeah. they'll come and uh, observe our morning ceremony and then our classroom instruction what makes our school strong in terms of our children's um, progress in um, learning who they are and teaching them about virtues and respect and all these things that many children lack, I hate to say, but we teach them here. Our morning assembly consists of, uh, they come to our school, they get dropped off, they go out to play, then they come in and then we feed them like they'll eat their breakfast and such and mm -hmm. then they'll do their morning journals and then we all assemble in the gym at about quarter to ten and then we start by smudging and then um, our elder will do the prayer and then I'll do the uh, announcements for the school or for the teachers or whoever has anything to announce that day and then I'll do my uh, daily routine of asking the students um, in Cree, of course, um, to tell me about the weather, the date, the, what day it is, mm -hmm. and we have our uh, our Cree sentence for the day and what does it mean, and then we encourage them to use their language in the classroom in the hallway, and then. Um, our uh, Oskape, which is the elders of Helper, he teaches the drumming and the dancing. His name is Brian Waskewicz, so he's a well-known chicken dancer in the powwow circuit. So he does the singing and the dancing, and our kids will sing, and then we'll dance, and then we'll sing, and that's our morning. And then when we're done, they're out to play. So that's where they feel grounded. Not just the students, but the teachers do. We really need that every morning. So that's one way of making the student un students understand who they are, where they're from. The singing is very powerful. So we have a lot of community, other schools come and visit our school all the time. Is there anything else you wanted to add? I guess I could share a little bit about our, um, our language here, on the, based on the four outcomes, the listening, the speaking, the reading, the writing. Let's say in grade four, we have 13 students in grade four. Mm -hmm. 
the listening we have uh, three stages there's basic intermediate and advanced so we have six students who who understand the language and then we have six intermediate and then we have one advanced and then uh, for speaking four are in the basic stage and four are in the intermediate and then one is in the advanced mm -hmm. to be able to speak. So that's how we measure our oh. students. And then for reading, let me see, there's nine that, are, that fall under basic and then four that fall in the intermediate and one advanced so they're able to read. And for writing, there's two in the basic Ten are able to in the intermediate level and one advanced. So that I'm hoping will increase by June when we test them again and mm -hmm. more so next year. So we'll be able to measure it. We in our smart goals one of them is uh, for the retention part we'll be able to measure if we meet, uh, reach our goal. We uh, as a whole, the teachers decide how much, how many percent they want to see the growth. And then from all the teaching and reading and writing, they have to meet or exceed that goal the following year. This year we dropped for some reason. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm hoping it, we're able to reach the goal in June. Okay. Cool. So. Yeah. All right, well, thank you very much. For thank you.